Welcome to episode number of the Carmudgeon Show. With come? your host, Jason Camisa. And your co-host, Derek Tam-Scott. Derek hyphen Tam-Scott, part of the Haggerty Podcast Network. Are you, you just insinuated that you are part of the Haggerty Podcast Network. Um, I guess so. Well, this is like the strippers JFK and Lennon. What? Oxford comma? You never heard about this? Yes. Um, <laughs> This is the when you when you specify why the Oxford comma is important, you do uh, you give the example of this this phrase that goes the strippers JFK uh, and Stalin, and if you don't include the Oxford comma, then the implication is that JFK and Stalin are the strippers. But if you do include it, then it makes it clear that they're strippers. There three J- that there are three parties there. This is why you have to use the Oxford comma. And this is why everyone tunes into the Carmudgeon show. It is yes, decidedly not. Okay. It is decidedly not. They tune in to listen to car content, and this week's car content relates to Car Week, an entire week dedicated to, uh, I guess, cars. That happens in California in August annually, in which we debrief miscellaneous activities, sightings, uh, recommendations, uh, the straight skinny on various events, the gay fat on others. It's the opposite of straight skinny. <laughs> um, and uh i think that's it do we have any other housekeeping haggerty belt things um, oh a debrief on your honda beat and speaking, what happened with that it was it my my honda broke something no. those words have probably never been said before hondas never break and mine broke uh but there's a reason and that's probably we will not discuss so that. Uh, uh, do we need to talk about Detroit Concorde Elegance mm-hmm. is in September? On September 23rd, we are uh, allegedly, apparently, hopefully, uh, going to be doing a live episode of the Carmudgeon Show at the Detroit Concorde um, some point during the day. So hopefully that'll be recorded and we can play it as an episode, but it will be broadcasted did, did live to the people at the... Uh, Attending, not on the internet. Yes. So sorry. broadcast is perhaps the wrong word, but... It will occur. Um, yes. The, the people there can watch us and listen um, and maybe even ask questions. So that should be a fun episode to do. Also, you've never been to Detroit. I have never been to Detroit. That is true. And uh, Haggerty's Drivers Club. You have to say something about that, right? I don't know. But if you're interested in towing your Honda Beat 148 miles from Using, Carly, yes, 148 home. out of the 150 available miles. Uh, Haggerty Drivers Club. Make sure you break down at exactly the address that I broke down so that you can get a Haggerty Drivers Club tow, guaranteed flatbed, all the way home. Uh, and um, there's a link in the bottom or there up top and then in the description. All right. He's learning. 100 and was this episode 112? Ish. 11 i don't know 109 went live 110 this is 110 thank you wow you snore loud <laughs> it's fake but it's you know i'm tired i am also tired you're old and tired sick and tired no i'm not sick just tired. Just tired. I hope you're not sick because we don't have a COVID like splatter shield going. Mm-hmm. Tired from Car Week. I am cracking oh, you open were gonna the coffee right now. Try and oh. fix fix the tired. This uh, episode is sponsored inadvertently by Starbucks Espresso and caffeine generally. Hmm. Um, yes, we have both just survived Car Week 2023, mm-hmm. which is uh, if you've never been to Monterey Car Week, it's a thing. It is a thing. Uh, let's see. Did we see? We saw some people whose first car week it was this year. Yeah. To get some impressions from them. I mean, they mostly just twitch. They get like an eye twitch and they're like, I, 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 I think I think I like it, but I never want to come back here again. And then you're like, the next day they're like, this is this is too much, but I love it. And then by day three they're like, yes, yes. So lean into the four to six hour a night of sleep schedule yeah. if you're able right and the rest of the time is a hundred percent overload sensory mm-hmm. over, it's just sensory overload it's sights sounds people cars um so earlier this year remember i went to villa desta for the first time which is mm-hmm. which i declared the best car show in the world um i find it relatively amusing that you and i went to monterey car week which of course is all wrapped around the pebble beach concord elegance which mm-hmm. is probably the most prestigious car show in the u.s concord in the u.s and neither of us went whoopsies not whoopsies that was on purpose mm. um from for me anyway i am that is actually the least interesting event of the year for me of the of the well of the week it's of the least interesting of the events that i would consider going to 
for the mm. week? What was your excuse? Uh, I just was very tired and didn't feel like spending the money. Mm, fair enough. Um, it is 400 cars in in a parking lot. I, it's one of the most beautiful parking lots you've ever seen. A grass seen. parking lot. I So a couple of reasons, I guess, for me. I like to see them in motion, and you can see them on Thursday morning being in motion, many of did. them. And we did. Uh, and we did. And, uh, if the, you know, if you are going to go to the Concours, my recommendation is to go early. You don't have to necessarily do Dawn Patrol, but find a way to get in early. I think it officially doesn't open until 1030 or something like that. But if there's a way for you to get in at like eight in the morning instead of five, Dawn Patrol is at the, when they're driving them onto the field and that's at like five in the morning which is, or whatever. Which is magic. It is very cool. It's, it's just almost very always, early. It's very early, but it's almost always foggy, misty. Um, and to dark. see these dark and to see these cars and their old like Yellow. yellowed headlights driving through or trying to drive through the fog uh, in this. It's just it's like it's it's like a movie set. It's it's yeah. unbelievably it's cool. Very evocative. Yeah. And we've talked about the differences in the, in the sound. Right. I mean, I, I, we were there this year and a Rolls Royce went by and a Tesla went by and the Rolls from the 1920s was far quieter than the yeah, Tesla Yeah, because it has uh, narrower tires. <laughs> now, yeah, and the, and the engine, you can't even hear them running. I mean, it's, yeah. it's fascinating. But seeing them parked in a parking lot or, you know, a, a lawn, lawn, yay, whatever. Too many people, too many cars, yeah. it's overloaded. So if you're not going to go at yeah. zero dark 30, then you go at like eight in the morning. Or Thursday. So Thursday is the Pebble Beach tour uh, mm -hmm. in which Thursday all morning. of the participating cars are invited. It's a, it's a drive that they do. Um, and it serves as a tiebreaker for anyone if they're tied for their class. If one had done the tour and one didn't, the one that wins the tour, uh, did the tour wins. Um, but it's really the place you can see them roaring away, which is pretty neat. Or whispering. Yep. Or whispering, yeah. And uh, I happened to get lucky this year. They were all on the way back from the tour while I was driving the opposite direction. Mm -hmm. So I got to see the whole, in addition to watching them all leave at the beginning, I, I, would, I got to see them all. Uh, we, were oh, we were together in, in the Citroen. And we were facing quite severely downhill. And so it's a 55 mile an hour uphill um, after a stop up a big hill. So we got to hear them all roar by us. That was really cool. Mm -hmm. Or While well, we were stuck in traffic. <laughs> yeah. In a fabulous Citroen. Yes. Um, yeah. So the week kicked off with me finishing the beat and you packing the Citroen. Mm -hmm. And so the Citroen was your choice for the for car week transport for the year why um because you certainly don't want to do it in a porsche <laughs> uh because there are so many porsches that it's just completely dull uh and you don't want to do it in a modern exotic because there's so many of those that those are also completely dull uh so i chose the citroen because it's the most interesting and it's also a car that doesn't inspire you to go fast it's not a car that, that where there's any value in going faster versus slower which is great because there's a shitload of traffic uh there's also a lot of like off pavement because you're invariably like at a golf course for a show or at a here for, like the racetrack is like on a hillside and so mm -hmm. there's a lot of like off-roading so the citroen was actually kind of the perfect car week car because you don't need to go fast to enjoy it it has a lot of suspension travel very a lot of ride comfort and it's the only one as far as I know, I'm not aware of any other CXs uh, on the entire peninsula. And there was a GS. I yeah. rode in the GS. I um, saw a DS. Ah, good. I saw only one. I saw a, du a Deux Chevaux to a 2CV. I did not see parked that. Parked in front of a French restaurant, of course. Of course. Um, what, and, and by the way, we're not kidding. There, how many 911, well, how many 911s or air-cooled Porsches do you think were on that peninsula that week? A thousand? Oh God! Yeah, at least it's got to be. I mean, and so so it's it's such a strange thing. You show up in a in a car that is you know ordinarily interesting and noteworthy, and like if you're driving around on a day to day basis and you see an air cooled Porsche, you're like, oh, some guy in an air cooled Porsche. Yes. Cool. Respect, right? Yes. And you see one there, and you're like, lack of respect. Yes. Because that is the most boring. You know, it's going to start run, operate perfectly, and be wonderful. But it's and it's just there's all of them. They're all the they all look the same. Like if you were trying to, add, I mean, to me, I feel as a person who is a car enthusiast, when you are at an event like this, you're you have a duty to make the traffic more interesting. <laughs> if you have a, so an interesting car, yeah. then it is your responsibility to exercise it and give people the joy of seeing it. Just. It, it is the Driving one around. time a year that I can street park anything and not worry about it. Mm -hmm. I mean, there, look, not everyone there is 
is there for car week but the vast majority of people are or they're at least conscious of it mm-hmm. so of course there was the one lexus who t- pulled out in front of 700 people and there was a guy oh there was a, another lexus who slammed on the brakes in front of me while i was in a 43 year old british car with drum brakes um be- only two of them only two of them because there was a truck coming and he thought it would be very nice to literally abs to a stop and then wave the truck out um so there are stupid people but the rest of the time i think most people are at least similarly minded or cognizant of the fact that you're in something old and special and dangerous and fragile and they respect it and so. as far as street parking goes there's going to be people nearby who are car people yeah. and so they're, gonna they're going to sort of i think socially corral a yeah. bad behavior yeah, that's true. Uh, of, of irresponsible of, people. Yeah, it's pretty neat. It's a pretty neat experience. Um, so yeah, the Citroen was very well suited to that. The other experience I had in the GS is we were parking it and this like bearded dude who looked like ZZ Top, gray haired bearded dude wearing a literal American, like the shirt was entirely American flag. Um, so interesting demographic, not, uh, he pulls up in a, what initially you're just like, oh, it's an old Ford. And then I looked at it and I was like, that's a Centurion, which is their special custom built, coach built uh, equivalent to a Suburban. Mm-hmm. It's a old Ford OBS, old body style Ford F-150, but turned into a four door. And it's just like, this is such a weird exchange to be happening between Mr. American Flag, who's interested in the Citroen. So he knew what it was. He, he appeared to. Yeah, yeah, he did. He did. I th- yeah. um, he knew it was a Citroen, certainly. Uh, so that was a great exchange of just like only a car week. And I was like, is that a century? And he's like, yes, it is. And I was like, amazing. I've never seen one in person. And he, so like, that's a very car it's week bizarre. experience. Yeah, you're in a French, you're in a United Nations flag. Driving yes. Around. Yeah. The car is one of the, it's a flag livery car because it went to the Munich Olympics in 1972. So they painted flags all over it. Oh, so cool. it was not a picture of subtlety, but it was a picture of coolness. Cool. Uh, and you did not Citroen. I did not Citroen and I barely beat it. Yes. Um, so, all right. So it's your Honda Beat update. So the only car that I've ever broken down in, during car week on any and had to be towed home on any sort of car week or whatever as is the Honda. Um, so what had happened was what an amazing track record. Mm-hmm. It's the one car that I expected to be reliable and probably would have been. All right, we'll get there in a second. So the Beat, I thought would be a fun Monterey Car Week car because it's special and it's little and parking is always a problem and I can park that thing literally on the sidewalk and you know it's not going to block anyone. So I finished the timing belt service after having found out that the belt was 23 years old. Pulled the belt out. It actually looked beautiful. So either it had been done before or it's just... You know, An undocumented park. belt service. Yep. Uh, put it all back together. Kind of a pain in the ass to work in the car because there's not a lot of room, but I have a lot of little tools. It was fine. Everything went wonderfully. Uh, put it back together, started, ran. Everything was great. I drove uh, to my buddy's shop. I charged the air conditioning. All we did was charge it. Boom, came right on. Blue, cold. Everybody's happy. Packed it and drove it down. Um, didn't skip a beat, miss a beat, whatever, <laughs> whatever. It, it was the beat. It was the beat. Um, I decided to take Highway 1, which is a 55 zone most of the way. That's what I would do too. Usually moving 50, 60. So I was at five or 6,000 RPM rather than seven or eight. A RPM. mere five or 6,000 yeah. RPM of cruising speed. Because the other way to go is the highway and there's an hour and a half of 80. Yeah. Uh, and I just am not Miles per hour. Time. Yeah. 80 miles an hour, which would also mean like 7,700 RPM or something close to that. So uh, made it down fabulously. The air conditioning blew cold. It was perfect as soon as you get off the coast like it was perfect at the coast with the top down and then as soon as you go inland it's eight million degrees so top up ac drove it to the house unpacked stuff went to the kickoff the uh, it's the grassroots motorsport and classic um what the hell's the other there are the magazine grassroots motorsports kickoff thing judged a couple classes saw a bunch of wonderful people great cars and then went to the ecme house uh, and the ECME house is just an open house basically for the week. It's one of the, one of the founding members. If you know us. If you know you, right. Uh, it just becomes a very social place. It's like, you know, ground zero for a lot of our circles of friends. So I went there and I left the keys in the ignition, uh, just so that if anyone needed to, I was blocking a Koenigsegg and I was stuck between that and like a Pagani or something. Oh, who knows? You know, and here I am in this little stupid beat. So I leave it there. I leave the keys in so somebody could push it out of the way if they needed to. And without my knowledge or consent, one of our f- close friends got in and drove away. Um, I was concerned for his mental state of being. 
I don't know what that means. And I was like, oh my God, how fucked up is he? And everyone's like, very, but your car will be fine. So we heard first gear, we heard second gear, and then we heard silence. And I thought, okay, well, everything's fine. He's gone. <laughs> uh, he's gone. And then my phone rang. Hey, your beat, it's out of gas. No, it's not. It's got a quarter tank. He's like, yeah, no, it's out of gas. I'm like, but it's not. It's got a quarter tank of gas. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't be ridiculous. Your fuel gauge doesn't work. And I'm like, it works perfectly. It's not out of gas. What happened? So we walk up the hill, you and I, and we get to the top of the hill and he's like, I don't know what happened. I shifted from second to third and it never came back. And Derek, because he's a sharp tongue jerk, says, yeah, that's because you shift back into because you shifted back into first. And that's immediately what went through my mind, right? Somebody who's unfamiliar Did with I the car. Did I say that? Yes. Oops. Immediately and without hesitation. Um, ah, yeah. oopsies. You're like, that's because you shifted back into first. And he's like, no, I didn't. But the thing is, somebody hops into a right-hand drive who's not used to driving in a right-hand drive car uh, with a 40 millimeter shift throw. I mean, it's like, you know, it's like shifting with a toothpick. Uh, my, my thought immediately went to, uh-oh, money shifted. It cranked. It appeared to have compression, but... It did kind of sound like it was out of gas. Uh, so we pushed down a hill. I drove all the way into town, bought a gas can, put a gallon of gas in it, which is a quarter tank, and uh, nothing. It just smelled like gas. So uh, it was 148 glorious miles to my warehouse from where we were, and Haggerty Roadside covers 150. So oh. thank God for Haggerty Roadside. Showed up, the car got put in, it's got brought home. I opened the garage door remotely, boom, and it there it sat. The best part of this whole story, though, is that on the way was my friend who was bringing down the Rover anyway. And it was a last second decision. Hey, I'm going to come down to Car Week. And I'm like, great. Here's the code for the garage. Go get the Rover and enjoy your wafting experience down to Monterey. It's already been road uh, road trip approved, approved yeah. for long, much longer distances. Had I known it was going to be the Monterey car, I would have charged the AC on that car. But I, we just hadn't gotten around to it. Um, it was a absolutely magnificent car we car it was fucking splendiferous it was perfect i, lo I love and this that all the, the whole beat failure happened on the first day on the first day yeah on tuesday first night i mean it was yeah, a, yeah i got tuesday. got up tuesday morning drove down there and then tuesday night it failed to proceed yes uh wednesday morning i got towed right wednesday yes night? yeah um, or maybe it was, it was thursday later, but it yeah. sat for a couple days behind the ECM house um and then mm -hmm. thursday got towed uh, but the rover was fucking flawless like, I still don't understand. How it's such a good example. Oh. It did better than the Citroën. The Citroën, uh, the passenger uh, window stopped working. Oh. Electric window. Shame. Uh, but yeah, otherwise the Citroën was fine. Yeah. The Rover held four people comfortably. Mm -hmm. uh, got 20 miles per gallon-ish, 19 point something. Um, yeah, turns out that car and generated gets... a lot of enthusiasm. This happened to both of us because we both operated cars that no one else nearby happened yeah. to possess. I, it was probably the only SD1 driving around on the Pinsula. I would guarantee one it. assumes. Yeah. And the CX was the same. So just constant message. I just saw you go by because it's you know if you're driving around in a red Porsche, that's not going to happen because it's a red Porsche. <laughs> Nobody's going to notice one. it or yeah. look at it or identify a flaming Porsche. No one would even notice. You'd have to yes. literally. I, I, I have like showgirls, yeah, showgirls with like Vegas signs on top of it for somebody to know. Um, ev it's not an exaggeration to say it rarely didn't have anyone surrounding it. It m most of the time when it was street parked or parked anywhere in, in public, there was a crowd around it. I was also I interested to that. hear that they were um, largely British folks. They're, so yeah, the. I mean, a lot of the people who came up with British and they're like, oh my God, I haven't seen one of these in America ever. They've never sold them in America. I'm like, yes, they did. They sold, you know. A thousand of them. <laughs> what was it? 1,245 yeah. or something. Yes. Um, yes. As rare as a Carrera GT. Yes. Um, <laughs> That's what you should put in the the, uh, the lead sentence when you do a, uh, a the description when you do a revelations on it. As rare as a CGT. Uh, they sold 300,000 of them total. <laughs> it's amazing. Yeah, 303,000. It's so nuts. But anyway, but the coolest thing was watching younger people lose their shit over it. Like, you know, we were sitting at a red light. We pull up to a red light and there was a kid sitting on, like, right on the side of the road, obviously just watching all the cool cars go by in downtown Monterey. And he's like, is that an SD1? And I was just like, how the fuck? fuck did you know yes why yes it is um it was really cool to see how he's much gonna joy grow up to be me brought. yeah could be um it was really cool to see how much joy that car brought. or the sure marketing the that you are bringing to the world about the existence of the sd1 is causing a resurgence in interest and collectability and values of rover sd1s that'd be nice because i think we overpaid for that car whatever um 
Uh, yeah, no, it's, uh, it's, it's really wonderful to drive a car that makes people happy. And I'm sure, sure the Citroën did. We were driving the Citroën when that French lady saw us. Mm-hmm. And she said, ton Citroën. Yeah, um, and she read the sticker that said, la vue c'est la vie. And she was very excited. You're going to have to translate that for La vue c'est la vie. The, the, the view is life. Yes. Or something well, everyone that's knows life. La vie, yeah. The view that's life. I guess, la yeah. La vue c'est la vie. The, the view that is life. Yes. Um, anyway, um, cool car. Cool car, but I love I love happy makers, right? Yes. No one, you no can, no um, embitteredness, no sort of disgruntlement, no anti one percenter sentiment because they're very much not one percenter cars. Well, they're they were one percent of the worst, the least traffic cars. traffic cars. I mean, they made a million CXs and three hundred thousand SD ones, but nobody saved them yeah. because they were just they're gone tools yeah, to they're all just go gone. places. Um, yeah, there's something to be said for a joy maker, especially look Pe- uh, Pebble. Or Monterey Car Week is wonderful for us, but terrible for the people who live in Carmel and sort of live on the peninsula. And the cops are not having any part of this anymore. It's just getting worse and worse. Yeah, no fuckery. Um, Yeah, I did see one of the DDE, the Daily Driven Exotic Car guys, got arrested um, with, Mm. I think, his Lambo. I saw somebody tagged me. Two of those cars got um, towed. Of the DDE cars? Mm Mm-hmm. Really? to the ECB house <laughs> after that occurred and the operators were no longer allowed to operate them. So they said, get these things out of here. Oh, shit. Anyway. Um, yeah, I, I did not know that. Um, uh, that was deserved. For, I know what the infraction was and it was deserved. It was unsafe. Uh, yeah, well, that's here, I, there's nothing I want. I'm on, very much on the fence, right? I love car culture and I love all kinds of car culture. And I don't like the fact that Carmel's resident. So Carmel was always the historical site of the kickoff. I don't know if always, but the last certainly decade or two, the, the kickoff was the a concourse on the Avenue, which is downtown mm-hmm. Car- Carmel. They they close off Ocean Boulevard Avenue, whatever it's Avenue. called. Um, and it was a beautifully curated car show. Um, that started on Tuesday and was free. So it was good for our people to go see cars at yeah. no cost. There are, there's definitely ways to do this on the cheap. There's also definitely ways to do this week on yeah. the not cheap, right. uh, but that event was free and always had interesting cars. Yep. And, and other than one run in that we had with the organizer who, uh, <laughs> who was very upset with our friend for leaving before he was able to get a trophy. Um, it was really just a wonderful kickoff. And he, the organizer, unfortunately passed away and Carmel immediately made it clear. It's over. It's done. He's dead. No, never again. Um, and I saw that Carmel had put out press releases about the zero tolerance policy for revving engines or any sort of other automotive fuckery. Um, and I stayed at a, at a friend's house in Pebble Beach. So inside the 17 mile gates and this is where the whole sort of ground Concord. zero is. Um, and all you hear is Lamborghinis all night. I mean, it's just one Aventador after the next Aventador, really? after the hurric- like a Huracan, after a guard. It's just screaming Lamborghinis revving and accelerating everywhere. And I, th- you start to just get irritated. You're like, what is it about these fucking cars that makes people get up at one o'clock in the morning and just rev their engines to their limiters uh, for no reason? Like people, there are people here. I don't like them. I don't know any of them who don't like car week or aren't here for car week. Let them fucking sleep. Um, so I can sort of understand that. I mean, there are people there who are into cars who are also not interested in hearing that it reflects poorly on the community. They have never heard an, a a straight piped Aventador at full throttle because that everyone wants to hear that (laughs) except if you're not into cars. No, I mean, I'm, I'm joking. So, so I'm a little bit worried every year because every, every year it gets a little bit more strict where I see more cops. They put a chicane, multiple chicanes on the roads inside 17 mile drive. So like here I come barreling down this 25 well, that's zone. That's why they do like it. 26. And there's a fucking chicane in the middle of the road with a, with a like crossing guard with a flashlight blinding me just yes. to say slow down. Yes. Um, and I thought this could be the beginning of the end. I don't know if the chicane works and that's as far as we go then i guess it's fine i mean i just went right through it i hit the guy and <laughs> through the cones and whatever. that's a lot of seconds it's of a, penalties right how a, many cones was that yeah, it doesn't count it's got big u.s bumpers nothing nothing dents it no i just mean for your autocross, not autocross time. Time. i know um but uh other than you know the police presence like it's just a wonderful thing to be around this many like-minded in- individuals revving lamborghinis aside um and there was a point to what i was gonna say did you, you know what it was? Some? No, I probably did at one point. But this you were talking about happy makers. Yeah, 
Oh, oh, and the idea to, to elaborate on your point of a car that doesn't want to drive fast, mm -hmm. it's the perfect thing yes. to have there. Yeah, the beat um, also is obviously very well suited to that because you can have a hell of a good time at very at low 10 speed. miles an hour. Um, yeah. But yeah, it. Uh, I, I actually drove it to one event that was uh, on the, I had to drive through the entirety of, what is it? Is it called? The Del Monte Pebble Forest. Beach, Del Monte Forest. Um, and so I could have gone on the main road or just, it was the equidistant to just go through. And it's all 25 to 40 mile an hour roads. I mean, you're never going faster than that ever. And I'm like, I finally found the first, the world's perfect pebble car. Cause I'm in fifth gear, halfway up the tack. Mm -hmm. And I'm just loafing along and this is like the right size roads and the right speeds for this car. And then mm -hmm. it broke. Yeah. Um, so the right, yeah, this is a discussion on what is the right car for the event. You just want something that there's not a lot of, right? Your goal is to expand the array of automotive experiences that the spectators are having. Uh, and but just have a little, I mean, I don't know if I think too much. I don't know if I totally agree with goal. you. It's not my goal. No, but it would be nice to produce to to add some value. To, if you, you feel like there's a community of car enthusiasts yeah. that you want to add something to the conversation that is not being added by anyone else, which is not something you get if you're driving around in a new Ferrari right. or a Porsche or worse, a rental car. I mean, one yeah. of the first years I went, I took a Toyota Avalon. So most journalists will bring press cars down, and the amount of press cars that show up at Pebble Beach is just insane. Uh, and I had an Avalon, and I, you know, brought it because I had a lot of luggage, because you need a lot of clothes, because everything is formal. Da 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 da. Um, and it was just a very different experience than driving a car that everyone is so happy to see, and you're so welcome anywhere. You can park as I did, a rover anywhere you want. And no one's going to be upset about this turquoise thing on their lawn. Not that I would park on someone's lawn, but it's, you know what I mean? Like you can edge into a spot, squeeze in somewhere. Yes. And no one's going to hit your bumper. No one's, they're just... So you had the, the kid who yelled at you, who said, is that an SD1? Did you have any other memorable ex we, i had the french lady of course the exclamation i mean from the i had french the guy lady. who's the head of the rover club of america come over and it was like oh my god and he gave me a great piece of advice he said uh, about that fuel injection uh it's amazing isn't it and i'm like well yeah it works all right and he goes well here's the great thing about it it will always start and it will always run Never well, but it will always do it. <laughs> <It's> <laughs> like, I'm really glad to hear you say that because there's a couple little weird, there's an idle it surge. surges, yeah, um, but just leave well enough alone. Which goes away, by the way, when the oxygen sensors are very hot. So if you get off the highway, it's a steady 800 RPM idle, just Amazing. perfect. Um, and then going down a long grade, and now that I've done that 400 times because it's very hilly there, there's a like a one hertz cycle of fuel cut and then non fuel cut and then mm. so you it's get supposed a, to be cut all, always but it sometimes so. cycles back but on so you go yeah. good enough good enough good enough it started it ran it was beautiful everywhere it went I um, yeah I heard when I was driving my Citroen in Carmel looking for parking one night uh, I heard a voice and it was obviously a adolescent male. And I just hear, what the fuck is that? <laughs> I really enjoyed that. That was probably that is, my favorite exchange of the entire <laughs> of the entire week. I think looking at that CX, I think that is the perfect question to ask. What the fuck is that? Yeah. I mean, it's so And it was obviously and, like audible. Like it wasn't yeah. like ashamed or anything. Yeah. He was genuinely enthused well, and yeah. curious, oh, curious I time. guess. Uh, I the first the first meal that I had there, I I saw a 28,000, 38,000 mile kilometer 190E 2.5 Evo 2 Ooh. with my color plaid interior. Mm -hmm. And the owner was great. And he, mm -hmm. he knew everything about the car. Um, Excellent. Was really fun. Like it's just, and it was, by the way, just parked in the parking lot for the, for the place we were eating. Mm -hmm. And so he, his girlfriend came over and said, hey, can I bother you a second? My boyfriend said, he'll give me 200 bucks if I go and say hi to you. And I'm like, one up, like, let's do a selfie. Let's do something stupid. So she, she was awesome. We started talking and he walked over and he's like, she came over in a couple minutes later and she's got two, two $100 bills. She's like, hey, <laughs> we start talking. He's a huge car guy um, and so. has this Evo 2 with no miles on it. Oh. And I wanted to punch him in the dick. Yes, because I'm because jealous. You want one of those? I do too. Yeah. I think those are super cool. Although I have to imagine the experience is not that much different from the cars we have. It's pretty different. It's is it? yeah. So the Evo twos are 235 PS versus 185, but they weigh over 3,000 pounds. My car is 2845, mm -hmm. um, and so the differential in speed is minor, 
at best, they will they'll pull another couple of kilometers an hour because they have lower drag coefficient, despite all the wings and everything else. Uh, but I think they're within a tenth to 100 kilometers an hour. Um, mm-hmm. And I think it was him or another uh, 190 16 valve uh, sort of specialist who's like, yeah, actually, the early cars are the fastest, mm-hmm. um, and the Evos aren't as, quite as quick. Um, so there's really, but more importantly, there's no difference in uh, speed. The steering is much quicker, and the suspension is much tighter. So mm. whereas our cars sort of will yes. will float over anything, and they hork over, and they nothing bothers them, and they're per, it's perfect for what they are. This feels very much like what M Race would car. do. Yeah. Um, so you know, really, really Button tight down. body control, um, and I kind of like our car better. Um, what? Once you factor in the fact that these are now half a million dollar cars, <laughs> um, visually, I think you no can get cars. one in the three hundreds. A mere three hundred thousand dollars, right? But you can get a really nice sixteen valve Euro sixteen valve for thirty thousand dollars. So is it worth ten times the price, mm-hmm. or twenty times the price? No. Um, but for the way it looks, mm-hmm. for that, yes. Um, but it's just so cool to see a street park two five sixteen Evo yeah. in the United States, a car which was never remotely yeah, available true. anywhere close to here. Yep. Um, I saw. I mean, I got a picture of somebody who saw a 288 and F40 and an Enzo right next to each other, just street parked. Of um, that's fun. Uh, what fun other highlights? See. One of the specialists at RM Auctions has a shooting break Aston Martin Virage uh, oh. that I got to see up close, which was one of the highlights for me of things to, that I got to see. I mean, this there were a handful, maybe there was a seven of these or something that were made where you could just get a station wagon version of the big Aston Martin and it so was cool. double green, green on green. And the, in the, the luggage area, there is wood veneer oh, like on the side. Fantastic. It's like a door panel, but on the in the luggage area, I mean, that's what this thing is. It was really, that's really cool. cool. And he's been sort of recommissioning it and drove it all around and stuff. That's so so cool. There was the was Dino cool prototype see. shooting brake also. The orange one. There's the orange one. Yes, we, we, I mean, although I don't we think know that the was owners. driving around, yeah. I don't think it was driving around much, but uh, I ran was, into the owner at the uh, Tour d'Elegance. Um, that was really cool. Very, um, very cool car. Very the cool. Ginevra concept. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, yeah, it was Ginevra Par- Parigi. It was like both Paris and Geneva, I think, mm-hmm. was in the name. So clearly they uh, it was at both of those motor shows in, I think, 60. Um, the other one that was interesting mm-hmm. to me was the very first Ferrari 308 GT4 Dino ever made, mm-hmm. thus the first ever V8. Ferrari, road Ferrari, car. yeah, uh, and mid-engine. No, not mid-engine. First V8 mid-engine. First mid-engine, yeah. yeah. First V8 Ferrari period, right? Road car. I yeah, certainly so. road yeah. car. Yeah. So the first modern flat plane crank V8 period. Mm-hmm. Um, that was for sale by a wonderful Brooklyn-born gentleman named Al. Yep. Um, Al and I had a fucking great conversation. It was like being at home with my family. Um, he was he was awesome. Um, yeah, he knew who you were and was very excited to show you around all the, the special characteristics yeah. of the car. It was gorgeous in like blue metallic, mm-hmm. gorgeous condition. It sold well. It sold for $405,000 plus buyer premium. Yeah, right? it sold in the mid 400s. Which is a shocking think price. about that from like, you know, 20 years ago or 10 yeah, years ago. Yeah, when they, I remember I sold one for $22,000 yeah. and it was a nice one. The guy had spent all this money and effort making a really nice one and we sold it for 22 yeah. grand. Yeah, that's pretty cool. I Historically mean, significant. That's an outlier value for oh, one of those cars because yeah. it's the first one made. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, it's on one hand, you're like, oh, it's a very expensive 308 GT4. On the other hand, you're like, it's the first V8 mid-engine Ferrari ever, ever. made. Right. You know, so then you're like, oh, that's quite a significant car. Yeah. So, I, I mean, I can see the value. And it was spectacularly presented. Yeah. It was like light blue metallic with white interior. It was really and just stunning. the cool details. Like the door handles were totally different than the production ones. And mm-hmm. it was just, it was, a, that was a neat car. It was a neat experience to get the tour uh, by, from, the from Al, by the passionate center. owner um, who did the car. I mean, yeah. he was the one that shepherded it through that uh, restoration. Um, so you just see all kinds of shit. I'm trying to think if I saw anything shitty that I loved. Like, yeah, how was the lemons? I didn't make it this year. Lemons was tough because I had to judge very quickly the German category and then had to leave for a friend's memorial. Mm-hmm. Um, so I had a friend. Of, so uh, you were working in efficiency away. mode. You weren't yeah. really uh, um, too focused. My advice to all of you listeners, is if you are, for example, 35 years old, this was this friend was 36 years old and in perfect health. Uh, it's very upsetting to see that um, somebody made a post on Facebook that was like, you know, it said something about like he that he passed away and then the next article in the news or in the news feed was there was a car accident in san francisco um and some website scraper picked it up 
and made an obituary out of with AI that you know Weston had died in a car accident in San Francisco. Um, and this was okay. Does it Which really is not matter? what happened? Not what happened. And so the family was just devastated. Like, what the fuck is going on here? And that's just a sad reality that I had never been presented with. Like, I didn't realize that that these scrapers would get shit so wrong. And next thing you know, it's all over. You do a search for his name, and it's just all this car accident, car accident, car accident. Um, but this was a good friend of mine, and I uh, was thirty six years old, in absolutely perfect shape and perfect health. Um, no drugs, no nothing. Um, got ill one evening and was vomiting, thought it was food poisoning uh, and went to sleep and never woke up. And it was a, a ruptured brain aneurysm. And so it's just a little bit of a PSA that we can give here now. And you know, um, that when you're feeling ill, you really have to have your friends around. You have to have somebody watching. I don't know what we could have done to save him. Cause it was yes, a, perhaps um, nothing, but most likely nothing. But you know, he did pass away very peacefully. He, you know, he went to sleep period and that's it um but uh but you know maybe he had some neurological signs first that we could have seen that's always what goes through your head um but just take care of each other i mean just watch your friends if they're if they're feeling sick especially as like covid season comes around you just never know he thought he got food poisoning yeah um and in 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 one of the first signs of an aneurysm rupturing is nausea and vomiting um and usually a a terrible headache which he didn't tell anyone about he just said i was up all night throwing up i feel like shit Mm -hmm. that was last we heard Um, But anyway, so that was the end of car week for me. I went home for his celebration of life and then um, didn't come back for the car show. I just wasn't going to do it at that point. Enough. Um, But Lemons was, as usual, now we can start to bring everyone down. um, uh, Wonderful because it like Wayne Carini showed up in a car that he drove over from some guy's auto sales that everyone knows. And I don't know. Oh, yes. Doty. uh, Doty. Um, And it was spectacularly shitty. It was a Carmen Ghia the hell was the story with this car whatever it was it was just gone it was just completely gone but he drove it over with no, over, with no brakes like mm. they had they had pulled it out of a barn um there was a dead aardvark in it or some fucking ugh, possum um <laughs> there was just it was just the possum had actually i have a picture of this but it had actually been taken out of another car that he found but it was like it was, was just it hilarious. matching numbers so it wasn't a matching, wasn't numbers, a matching numbers possum because yeah. it came from another uh, car but it was just so cool to see this pile of shit that you know wayne was stupid slash brave enough to drive and i'm like please tell me he wore a mask because the car was just there was a nothing left to suit. it yeah. um but there was uh, something for everyone there's always that show is a lot of fun it's, it's a bit of comic relief on a week that's really it takes itself a little bit too seriously at times yeah. yep um but I brought a friend with me and, you know, we were talking about this. We probably, we ran ourselves ragged and we probably saw one tenth, went to one tenth of the events we could have gone to, mm-hmm. um, one fourth of the ones that we would have wanted to go to and one fiftieth of what was actually there. Yes, that's true. It's, I, I think another pointer, I was talking to someone who's, I think, second car week and he said it's such a difference to have a crew of people that you like and hang out with. Mm-hmm. And then it becomes a sort of just a, a week long hangout with all your car friends yep. going to cool different things. Mm-hmm. You go by yourself. It's not nearly as rewarding as if you go with a little group of people who, you know, are like minded and you sort of socialize. And there's, you know, every, a lot of the enthusiasts who rent houses will have an event and you get together and see people. And mm-hmm. it's like, you just hope to, to cross paths with everybody who you want to interact with all week. And of course, and you meet, meet everyone's new, new cars and, and when you meet their people. new friends and their yeah. cars and it's just yeah it yes. winds up being as much about the people as it does about the cars always absolutely always. car people uh what else you went to the quail so uh, the quail is um i have a little bit of mixed feelings about the quail because well, all right so first let me talk about motor lux so motor lux you previously was called mccall's jet center party yes right? um and if you had to describe it in two words, what two words would you use? I have previously called it motor douche. Uh, I would say in two words, it's the best, the best definition I've heard of it. The description of it I heard was hookers and blow. <laughs> um, okay. But it's very, it was very, very wealthy, image oriented, very image, very lot more money than plastic. taste. Yeah. A lot of plastic surgery, a lot of bad plastic surgery. Yeah. Um, so I got tickets this year. So Haggerty bought it, changed the name to Motor Lux, and it's still at the Jet Center. And same time, same, same time, location. Same yeah. And I brought my friends. I was like, "Come on, this is just going to be like the Food. world's best shit show." Yeah. Um, and it was kind the of the vibe not. is different now. Yeah. yeah. It was kind of great. 
Yeah, I had um, a good time at that event. Normally, I try to avoid it. There was a whole K car display, which I didn't even know about. Like, I wish they would have asked me. I would have brought the Beat in. There was a white Beat 660, the the mm. current one. Oh, the uh, um, Honda S660. Yeah. Yes. Um, and uh, there were great cars in there, and Roof had their display there with their spectacular new cars. Um, great food. It was just, it was a lot of fun. So that's the sort of like bougie fancy one that I thought I was going to hate, but actually quite loved. There was dancing. There was great music. Um, and then... So that's the sort of first night, I guess second night. And then... And that was also adjacent to Broad Arrow's preview and they have an yes. auction there that happens the night after, I think. And so it was nice to get to see those cars right. as well. I preview. never made it over. I made it as far as the white 246 Dino that I did the revelations on. Oh yes, it was there and it sold, I think, a shade under 500. Did it, I was going to ask you if you'd seen that. I keep meaning to look. Um, but I went over and I gave it a little pat on the butt. I love that car. I, If I had the money, I would have that car in a second. Um, but then the next sort of like real event is the Quail. The Quail, colon, a motorsports gathering. Yes, that's Friday. That's Friday. Tickets are very hard. $150. Yeah, tickets, a a if you can find one. Yeah, which you can't. Which no you chance. can't. Um, yes. And I normally wouldn't want to do such a thing. Um, I was there as media, so I, I don't have to pay that. And I hate to even admit that, but I'm not going to spend $1,200 to go to a party. It is free food and free booze and the champagne is definitely flowing, but I don't drink. So it's fucking wasted on me. Um, but that is a relatively small amount of cars curated very well in a cool location with great food, great drink, good music, um, and an amazing crowd. Yes. There's certainly some crowd watching. Um, the best way to attend the quail in my opinion, although it's more expensive in some ways, but less expensive in other ways is to enter a car. Show a car. Yeah. Right, if you show a car there, uh, I don't know what it costs anymore, but I, I've done them. Year. It's 950 this yeah. year. So you get two tickets for 950 instead, instead of, of 1250 12 ahead. Yeah. So it's a substantial discount as long as you have something interesting enough right. that they want to see there. Mm -hmm. uh, they do a better job. And of course, it, I think it was a, it started as a counterpoint to Concord Elegance, which, you know, the best of show almost always goes to a pre-war car. It has not always, there have been a couple exceptions, but almost always Concord is Elegance is stodgy and oriented towards pre-war cars and you know there's some discussion about whether that's anachronistic and it's sufficiently inclusive and like it was a big deal the first time a lamborghini was ever shown mm -hmm. at concord elegance which wasn't that long ago you know we're talking like 10 or 20 years ago that the first time a lamborghini ever went on the lawn at right. pebble because they were like that's Gasp. not a real that's an upstart uh um, you know usurper newcomer we can't be highlighting the history of lamborghini 60 um, years later yeah yeah so that was where pebble so so quail started as a place to show sort of really desirable interesting cars that were not pebble beach type cars you know cars that were post-war mm -hmm. substantially with often a motorsport slant bent right. potentially yeah mm -hmm. uh and so it was an interesting idea to do something that's kind of pretty sophisticated in its execution but includes food and drink which is not true at the concord elegance true. uh and uh just a place for example i think the mira is a very good case study of the type of car that we displayed there an f40 or a 288 you know those cars wouldn't go on the lawn at pebble no. but they're desirable and people are interested in them and it'd be a nice to have an event where you could see that and so they will curate their events so that they have stuff like you know the best example or a very interesting example of whatever post-war sports car that is of interest to you whether that's a cobra or some coach-built swiss car or modern exotics right. or you know and now there's certain marks that treat it as a display for new cars too which i'm less keen on i'm less keen on that i mean what i loved was porsche had uh their display and then directly in front of it were i think 11 carrera 2.7 rs's mm -hmm. and nine, for the 50th anniversary for the 50th anniversary and then nine 959s directly across the way where the hell do you ever see 959s nine of them mm -hmm. um car like, week is the answer unbelievable to see them in just sort of like all of these different colors it's come on that car just doesn't exist yeah. um that was a, a neat experience and then of course i'm walking around i see ceo of lucid i see jason castriota who's a designer i mean just personality after personality after personality uh, mm -hmm. kind of everyone's there yeah. um in the industry so that's a that's always a highlight for me it's just become the event to attend i think for most people justifiably so but anyway the best best way to go is to show a car and it doesn't necessarily need to be expensive it just has to be interesting and cool uh but there's obviously discretion there it's hard to do but mm -hmm. it is worth trying to do at some point if it's a consideration uh but we have plenty yeah. of people we know who are not these sort of uber wealthy next level people who people who have sort of relatively 
standard but like well executed uh, vintage cars and show their vintage cars there. Stuff, yeah. So it's a, a good path to take. Uh, I would on like to show a car there at some point. It'd sure. be fun. It'd be fun. I'll bring the, the SD one. Uh, no. I, is it nice enough? No, no, no. It's it's okay. not. It's not quite there. But uh, um, something at some point, I'm sure. I I'd show the Mercedes. I mean, that's you know, that's definitely motorsport. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, the Cosworth. Anyway, so then that's kind of. I mean, I never made it to the racetrack. Oh, I did uh, once. Okay, yeah. so there for the entire week, or actually two weeks, isn't it? There's, yeah, there's prehistorics. And then, uh, and then the racing is the the subsequent which weekend. Is literal all day, every day, race yeah, after race practice. after race after practice after race after. I mean, it's just unbelievable. Yeah. And so I say to people, there 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 are people who come to Monterey are there for the entire week. I'm there for the entire week, and not only do we not ever cross paths, but we're never. I've never been to any of the places that they went, and vice versa. So <laughs> there are people who are literally at the track for five days. Um, or they'll be at the track, plus go to the Ferrari house, plus go to this event, Concorso Italiano or whatever. And oh, their yes. list and my list have literally not Zero a single overlap. Yeah. yeah, but you were both busy every day. The every entire, minute yeah. of every day, yeah. Yep. Um, so, yeah. Uh, so made it home on Saturday, and then on Sunday I dug into the beat. <laughs> ah, yes. I was there. Um, good news. Well, all right. So the good news was it had compression. But it only had 120 PSI of compression. Right. Which is down from 180 the last time I checked it. But. Which was not too long ago. Which was, yeah, months ago. January. So the, but it was even across all three, which told me, okay, that's a really good sign. Some, obviously timing's off. Mm-hmm. Um, but there, it would be very unusual for all three cylinders to have exactly the same compression had there been piston valve contact. Right. Um, so my theory was the timing had slipped. The timing belt had jumped. Um, and so I tore the whole friggin' thing apart because you can't really see anything until you have the motor mount out and all this other crap done. Uh, and sure shit, it was two teeth off, um, which it had not done been. The, uh, so I timed it, uh, started it, and it ran perfectly. Compression tested, it was 180, so right back where it used to be. And then, um, then I boroscoped it. So I put a camera down and just make sure that in the prodigious layer of carbon that there is on top of the piston there's no valve marks and mm-hmm. nothing so there's no question there was no valve contact in any of the cylinders that is best case scenario so then it becomes a question of what the fuck happened yes and what did our friend do to my poor little beat or what negligence may have unfolded during the uh, i've done a lot wrenching. of timing belts I've done a lot of timing belts, and I don't fuck up timing belts. Okay. Have, had not. Had not. <laughs> Ever fucked up a timing belt? Okay. okay. So here's the way this works. This is a manual tensioner on the belt. So you are required to effectively decide how much tension there is. Better design, I would call them better designs, have a spring-loaded tensioner that puts a certain amount of tension on it, and if the belt stretches a little bit, it's always going to remain constant. This is not like that. This is a you manual. are setting the initial amount of tension, and then st- it can evolve over time as the belt stretches. Right, it can example. do whatever it wants. However, there is a helper spring um, that helps you set that tension. So the idea is, you get the belt on, you put the spring on with the tensioner, and you rotate the engine a couple of, usually, really only one turn. Um, and by that point, everything settles in. The tensioner has applied the correct amount of tension to the belt. You lock it down and go. I did that. And in fact, I did that and I turned the engine over three full, three full revolutions because I wanted all three cylinders to do their, to do their thing, compression, go through all four strokes. And then I did one for good, another one for good measure because you only need two. So I thought, okay, we're good. Three, it was a little looser than I wanted it to be. So I nudged it a little bit, tightened it down and called it a day, put it all back together. It started, ran, everything was perfect until our buddy drove it. And that would appear that to be the time where it was just loose enough that it jumped. Um, so I think what my guess is what happened is he did a very aggressive shift or even something that sent a shock through the power yeah, or a money shift, which doesn't matter. I mean, it doesn't, it didn't no harm, no foul. Um, but for whatever reason, I made it 400 kilometers with no issue. Uh, but when he drove it, it jumped. So ultimately it's on me. The, t- the belt wasn't tightened enough um the it's that spring actually got looks to be like it got hit by the belt when the belt was sort of jumping around um and got ground up in in the belt so there is a hole in the belt um (laughs) which is not what you look for normally in a timing belt and there are some uh some marring there's some marring on the on the sprocket of the water pump which is driven for the belt 
Um, but that's it. So you dodged a bullet. I dodged a bullet. And I think what happened was. And you need a new timing belt. I have a new timing belt. You're not going to believe this. So I'm at the Porsche party one night. Um, and some guy walks over to me and he's like, hey, what happened to the beat? Because you had posted that it was suffering from right. uh, failure to proceed. Down. Yeah. And I, so I told him, I'm like, eh, I think timing jumped. I might need a motor. And he's like, well, let me know. I have a beat on the way, on his way from Japan. And I have a whole bunch of parts that I bought previous, you know, uh, that I have sitting. In advance of the car arriving. And I work at such and such dealership. And the dealership is like walking distance from my house. So I'm like, get out. And he's like, I met your car at Radwood. Derek let me sit in it because I've wanted one for my whole life. And I never thought I'd ever be able to fit in it because he's tall. You let him sit in my car. He said, oh shit. And so now he's bought one. So it's huh. super cool. Closing the loop. Yesterday, I didn't realize it was that fellow. Yeah. Yesterday, I'm at the bank. I realized the bank is right next to the, the dealership. I texted him. I'm like, hey, are you there? Not only is he there at work, he's got all of the parts in the trunk of his car. He gives me a timing belt, kit, water pump, tensioners, the whole thing, plus trumpets that you can put on the individual throttle bodies to make more power, which I bought from him at the price that he paid so that I can go dyno the car um, and see if there's any difference before and after. Um, and so I'll have the car, and he's got a valve cover gasket, which I didn't even have for the last one. So the car will be probably tomorrow back on the road. Outstanding. What a, I, Car week is amazing. I break a beat and somebody walks over to me and says, I, I effectively... I work walking distance from your house and have all the parts that you're going to need. Let me know. Mm -hmm. Very convenient. Summed up car week. Uh, yeah. Like-minded folks. Indeed. Uh, let's see. Yep. What else? Anything else that we missed? I feel like I should go through my pictures and see what the fuck else we did because it's such a blur that it I really is. remember. I'm still feeling a little hungover from the whole experience. So Saturday... Saturday was a tough day because of the memorial, but we got back um, at 7.20, walked in the door, and I had a birthday party to go to later that night. And so I thought, let me just sit down for like Forever. <laughs> I woke up at 7.30 the next morning. <laughs> 12 hours dead to the world. I don't do that. Like, I'm good for, like, I love to sleep and I'm a good sleeper, but come on, no one in their four early 40s um <clears throat> would like, no one could, who what the fuck is the last time you were able to sleep 12 hours yeah never out like a light i mean that's yep. how that's car week i look um, forward to when that arrives for me i'm not quite there yet what the 12 hours yes <laughs> i haven't quite achieved that yet i needed it i mean it was yeah. just you know it's it's run 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 drop and then your alarm goes off and you're like, there must be some sort of mistake. Yeah. It's still dark out. Oh shit, it's 6.30, run, 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 drop. I mean, yeah. Uh, yeah. it's the best kind of running and dropping. Mm -hmm. um, but the, you know, the... Oh, we drove some new low tie, which we can talk about in a subsequent <sighs> episode. Uh, we, I think we should, yeah, let's do a separate episode on that. Dedicated um, episode dedicated on the new episode. low tie. We drove an Emira mm -hmm. and an Eletre, mm -hmm. which I don't know how to pronounce in English. Ele it's a, it looks Eliter? like French. Eliter? Uh, Electra, 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 the electric Lotus SUV, mm -hmm. um, which I should probably do a Instagram post about PDK. Apparently I'm the first journalist to drive in the U S and I'm like, Oh shit. No, I don't want it. I want to hear that because I'm like, now the time pressure is on. Um, they didn't, they haven't done a program yet. Cause they genuinely didn't know if the cars were going to be here in time. Yeah. So they didn't like, announce it. It arrived. No, like it's here. Do you want to take it for a ride? And then we did. And then afterwards they're like, you're the first person, first journalist to drive the car. And I was like, Fuck, that means I need to go back to my house right now. Can't be fucked. It's just, I, I, haven't, I haven't made a post in days since the beat broke. I'm like, I just don't, I wanted to just resolve, resolve the beat, figure out what happened, get your motor swap underway, because mm -hmm. that'll be next episode, right? Yes, next week we will talk about the motor swap on the wagon, on the um, Mercedes wagon. Yeah, Matt Quick, who's a uh, Mercedes enthusiast and insane guru. <laughs> yeah insane guru or just it was insane comma and a guru yes. and swaps engines into mercedes that they have no business being into he will be here as our guest uh for our third guest i'm gonna have to make a thingy for him um and we'll talk more about uh his car and the motor you're swapping into your s124 purple dogleg wagon mm -hmm. um so that well, for once we actually know what, what next week's episode will be about and do you know why because we recorded it already why do you tell them these things? Because they already know. Yeah, they figured us out. Um, sorry about last week's episode being published on Thursday, was it? Yes. Um, somehow, somehow my 
YouTube access is broken. And so I can't upload anything. I can't do anything on YouTube. And uh, the, there was a miscommunication among the team when we said, push this out. They thought, oh, get it push ready it out for, for next Monday. Monday. We're like, no, 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 we'd forgotten. I couldn't get it. I, I couldn't get to it. So uh, we're a couple days late, but um, better late than never. And people seem to still enjoy the random number generated spreadsheet reviews. I so those. I really love those. They're certainly amusing. Um, people, someone in the comments requested if they could um, do requests, basically requests reviews that your review on a certain car, which is an interesting idea. That's great. We should do one of those Patreon things where we charge them a hundred bucks a piece. <laughs> <laughs> Give me a hundred dollars and I'll shit all over your car. No, uh, that's actually a great idea. We should do a live. First of all, we should do, we should probably do a, another Reddit, like ask me anything. Mm. Um, mm -hmm. But we could do the random number generators as a sort of uh, tell me what you think. By of request, my car. as long as everyone's not going to get butt hurt if I say things like your car sucks. Mm -hmm. No, I mean people. I think understand uh, that that's a very real possibility. Yeah, I just Matt was saying that he was really nice in person and that he was surprised by that. Matt, oh, yeah. Matt, quick. Okay, so Matt, who's joining us next week? Apparently, I offended him. Apparently, I offend, offend a lot of people. This That's is That's your shock. brand. No, 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 no. Not those people, but real people. So there was another friend that came over and said, you know, you sh I really didn't appreciate you shitting all over me. Well, he said it. Somebody said to me that he was very upset with me because I had insulted him. And I'm like, what? You brought him up in an episode. I'm like, oh, that idiot. He doesn't know what the fuck he's talking about. Okay. Let me make this really clear to everyone whom I've offended directly. You don't exist. <laughs> Directly only. <laughs> you don't exist as a person. If I don't know you and you're not in the studio and we don't name you, and this was our problem was you said his first name and I didn't think about it. You don't exist. So you're just this person. And of course, I'm going to be like, what the? F if he disagreed with my point of view, and that was what happened. He liked a car that I hated and vice versa. Or he preferred one version of a different one. I'm like, what the fuck does he know? That was sarcasm. And I, and, and I didn't mean, I didn't think that it would ever be associated with him ever he is a tastemaker he's got unbelievable taste he's exquisite he's all of those things and that didn't get through to him so somebody told me that i was upset he was upset that i had like called him out for like having no taste or something and i'm like no i didn't and like yes you did and i'm like no i didn't i he has great taste why would i say that so i went over to him at car week and i we had a wonderful conversation because he's a great person and so he did he understood but i was he was like i was ready to like lose it I was going to kill you. And I'm like, I, normally, Derek, we don't say anyone's name, so we get to shit on our friends. Be like, oh, we have a friend. who oh, isn't he an idiot? Da, da, da. We get to do that for comedy purposes. But not only did I insult him and his taste, but I also insulted Matt, who will be here next week, because you said he r routinely sends text messages to you or DMs to you about all the things that I get wrong because he knows so much more than we do. And my immediate reaction is, well, apologize to his wife because obviously he's no good in bed right i said something like because he doesn't have yes you, you posited that he didn't have the time to do anything else yeah. other than be that knowledgeable clearly i mean that's a joke right anyone who's we are already off the charts nerds and i just have to then throw anyone who's even nerdier than we are totally under the bus and back over them six times um but he was also offended and i was like no 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 no, no. I, he I, wasn't offended his wife was his offended. wife was mad yeah and i get it but like i didn't know him i'd never met him like i mean he's just this person who you were saying was more of a nerd and i'm like well fair game more of a nerd fair game so if i've offended anyone directly i'm sorry you don't exist on this show and you're just a name or non-name a person that we're talking about and making fun of. So, pfft. All right. Well, that's the housekeeping <laughs> for this week. Um, don't ever let me do a timing belt anywhere near your car. Oh, did I not say the reason why I fucked up the timing belt? You did it on purpose? No. Oh. Hondas spin backwards. So knowing that I went through the procedure and having replayed this over and over and over and over in my head, trying to figure out how the fuck I got this wrong, I realized... I remember, of course, that the Honda's, Honda's engine sp spin counterclockwise are done. They did. All, every other engine I've ever worked on spins clockwise. My theory is that when I did those three revolutions to get the belt to seat and then tighten down, I did it clockwise, which would put the tension mm. on the wrong side of the belt, which would leave the, the, the other side too loose, which I'm pretty sure is what happened. So in reality, it is not our friend's fault. Although I would recommend not jumping into someone's car without any permission to just go for a drive on a cold engine revving to 7,000 RPM. But that's not the point. The point is, I think, I think I spun the engine the wrong way and therefore did not properly tension the belt. 
Learning has occurred. Don't spin an old Honda engine clockwise while, okay. while tensioning the timing I'm belt. I'm less interested in doing the timing belt on my... You're doing it. Volkswagen. You're I doing have, it. I own another Volkswagen. Guess why? They spin... Yeah, you haven't admitted that to our friends here, have you? No, that I bought another GTI mm -hmm. and it has a timing belt. A Mark what? Five. With what in it? Um, an engine. <laughs> a cage. Oh, yes. Yeah. Half cage. Half cage. And seats and harnesses. One of the most fun cars I've ever driven. Belonged to a friend of ours who's a complete fucking idiot. See, I can say that because no one knows who he is. He, if he's <laughs> listening, he knows I'm just joking. But uh, wonderfully An fun idiot car. for what? For selling it? <laughs> no, he's smart. He sold it to you because now he can borrow it. And you get to do all the maintenance and repairs on it. Mm -hmm. um, no, I had seriously considered when you told me it was for sale, I thought, do I need car number 12? Well, now you don't have to buy it either. That's perfect. You have it and I can borrow it. Yes. Um, yeah. So we can talk more about your Mark V 2.0T electro hydraulic steering six speed manual race car. Mm -hmm. And you got rid of the Miata, right? Yes. I sold my portion of the Miata. So now for the first time since knowing this car four years ago, it is in the ownership of a single individual instead of part owned. Fabulous. Because the other half changed hands couple years ago this is the miata you're talking yeah, about still yeah. the miata so it's had a, it's halves all changed it's hands fractional ownership yeah. by derek tam scott yes um, my specialty yeah exactly. all right thank you for joining us uh tune in next week for the no. um, for mercedes nerd uh no do, don't tune in next week next it's week the holiday Day? yeah sorry next no? week is the fourth of september or similar, which is uh, uh, the holiday. So it, the, the ep next episode goes live on the 11th. Okay. So if you don't hear from us on September 4th, it's because we are in labor. Yes. Uh, celebrating our labor. Um, well, on that bombshell, time to call it push. <laughs> Breathe. <laughs>